YouTubers, Brian Proctor back again with another video. And this one is entitled How to Make Money Using Your Artistic Ability. And this is not so much geared for the older, like you have 30, 40. I mean, even though you might be able to use it, but it's geared more toward the younger kids or younger people that have found out that they have an incredible artistic ability but really don't know what to do with it they enjoy drawing but they don't know where to go this i'm going to give you some examples in this uh video that will tell you what you can possibly do to make money and show you some pictures and, and give you some stories on how to do it as well now unlike my time when i grew up i grew up in the 60s and um the only three jobs we were offered back then in school, the teacher always said, you could either be a doctor, a police officer, or a fireman. And I don't know why we had those three choices, but that's all they were saying. And uh, number one, growing up in a, a poor black neighborhood, now, it wasn't gonna be too many doctors that came out of my neighborhood. And even if you were a smart enough kid to wanna go in that direction, they weren't ready or prepared to show you how to do that, not not in my neighborhood anyway. So then nobody wanted to be a police officer because nobody wanted to get shot because we were still dealing with prejudice and segregation back in the 60s. So we were left with being a fireman, you know, but I mean, when you go to school, that's the three things they say, do you want to be this, this or that? And you were like, you know, stuck with a fireman. As we got a little older, we always heard about somebody's brother, their uncle or their father got a job for the city working, dumping trash. Now that might be sound like an 80s sitcom, but it was true. And back in the day, trash men made pretty good money for that time. And uh, everybody wanted to work for the city, you know, be a trash man, be a trash man. But, you know, unlike today, you have so many job opportunities, not jobs waiting for you, but have opportunities to become whatever you want. And even if they don't have the Shall we say the title that you want? You can go out and create your own now because this is the best time to be an entrepreneur to create your own business. So if you have the talent or if you have talent, artistic talent, I'm going to show you some ways that you can go out and make money using your talents, not doing what somebody else tells you you have to do or what you should become. You can do what you want using your talents. All right. So. There's a number of them, and this is going to be a pretty long um, video, so stay with me because I have a lot of stuff to show you, and I don't want this to turn out to be a, oh, he's just showing off his art because I'm not. It's just it's part of the video. It's part of me showing you and telling you what you can do and what you should do versus, oh, he's just showing off because I could always make a video and just say, oh, look at my art. This is my art. So it's going to be pretty long, but stay with me, and we'll get it going. Okay, so the first thing you can do to make money with your ability. Now, I'm just saying that you're young, you're in your teens, you know, maybe um, uh, junior high school, high school, you're in your teens and you love to draw. You sit around and you're drawing all day, but you're like, I don't know what I want to do, but you enjoy drawing. Back in my day, if you were an artist, we were looked at as the people that paint pictures and sell them on a the curve. And the only way you can become rich is after you die, you're paintings become more so back in the day artists were looked down upon but if you look at the world today there is art in everything the hand of an artist is in everything so if you have the ability to draw then i'm going to help you expound on that expound on that and then possibly get a job go that go that direction all right i'm starting to mumble now so let's go start with this the first one is to draw comics and then because this channel is geared to a lot of people that like to draw comics, of course, that's going to be number one. And you might say, well, why comics? Well, because when you do comics, you're doing everything. You're not just drawing superheroes. You're drawing people. You're drawing expressions. You're drawing the body turned and twisted in every direction. You're doing interior design, your exterior. You're drawing cars. You're drawing everything. So comics, to me, is a good starting out point to doing anything artistic so that's number one i'm giving you some examples or before i do that let's just say this if you are drawing if you're home drawing every day and you're drawing the batman and you're drawing superman and you're drawing all these other characters stop it stop right now just stop now why would i say that okay let me give you an example picture time let's say here's a picture of batman this is, I drew this, this is online. 
I pull back because I have a bigger one. Here's another picture of Batman, Robin, and uh, Batgirl, not Robin, Nightwing. And yet, here is another picture of Batman. Now, I can draw a thousand pictures of Batman, but that won't get me anywhere. You need to start drawing your own character. That's the only way that you would discover your true talent. That's, you have to go down that rabbit hole. And I'm sure you might have heard the terms about, you know, how deep is the rabbit hole. That's where your talents lie until you go down that rabbit hole far enough to find out exactly what you can do. You'll never become a great artist. I had no idea what I could do when I was young. I was born with this talent. I didn't ask for it. I was born with it, but I didn't have anybody there to show me or to tell me how to become a better artist. I kind of discovered that rabbit hole myself because it, I, I used to just draw my comic book characters or comic book characters, Wolverine, Spider-Man, Silver Surfer, and that's all I would draw all day. I didn't put any background to them. I just drew and drew and drew. And if you are like that and you know the, how to do anatomy pretty, pretty well, then you need to start doing your characters because that opens up the mind. Um, Wolverine has a particular stand that he always does. But when you take your character, you have to develop a stand for your character, the way he stands, the way he looks. So that takes you deeper into that rabbit hole so that you can discover what other abilities you have. So comic books is one of the best starting points to do to develop your talents to make money. Don't get me wrong, drawing your favorite character is a good way to get the artistic fluids going, to get you excited, to get you to draw. But if you're doing that, start inking, start coloring. Example, step outside the box in some of these things. Example, this is, this is, this is Zealot from uh, Jim Lee's Wildcats. And uh, I got tired of drawing and inking, so I wanted to try something else. So if you see the shine, this is the, um, what is it, the silver, the silver pin. There's a silver and a gold one. So I try to do a silver on her body and something to make it shine. So like that, when you're drawing, step outside that box, go in that rabbit hole, see what you can do, where your talents lie. Like um, one thing I hated, and I'll show you later, was watercolor. You know, I hated watercolor because when you draw, you want to be precise. You take your pencil and it's sharp and you get your lines just right. Watercolor, you put it in and it just runs all over the place. I hated watercolor, but I had to go deeper into that rabbit hole. And I found out that I could do watercolor uh, with a lot of other things. If you have the talent to draw, you have potential talent to do anything, but you have to discover it by stop drawing Batman all the time, stop drawing Superman all the time, start to use other mediums to do your pictures. And as I say, uh, you might say to yourself, I don't have a character in mind, but um, turn yourself into a character. Take yourself, I'm sure that that's one reason everybody wants to do superheroes because they see some of themselves in that as well. And when I was young, let me see if I can, where is this thing at? I don't know how old I was. This is an old piece. I drew myself with some other characters that I made up. That was me back in the, in the center when I had hair and I was buff like that. No, but I decided to do that. And doing this, I started writing stories for my team, shall we say. And even if it was just like a short paragraph, every day I had an idea and I wrote it down in a notebook and I still have it somewhere. I'm sure it's all yellowed out somewhere, but that helps you become a writer as well. So using your imagination, using your talents to do other things helps you develop as a fully rounded artist. I'll give you a few more examples, but I don't want to, I want to stress the point that comics can open a lot of doors. I want to show you some of more drawings and um, let you know that by doing comics, by drawing, it helped me and I, I love comics so much that I'm, it led me to so many other things. This is another one of my characters. Characters, I did this one center character and then the other characters uh, came about from being around because you can't have a superhero without uh, villains. A couple more, 
just quick, I'm just quick flash, and you can like go back and look at it and pause the video. This guy, and you started. I started inking. I started having to learn how to ink myself from watching other people ink, and that's another thing that it it does. It teaches you different not techniques, but different things to do. A couple more. This is a big one here. Hopefully, you can see it. And then one last one. But as I say, this once you learn the anatomy, the anatomy is the big point. Then you start inking. Then you want to go into coloring. Then after that, you want to go into doing perspective. You have to start doing backgrounds for your people because drawing, everything can't float into a white space. You must learn to do perspective. And that was something else I always had trouble with, but I was able to do it. I kept going deeper and deeper into that rabbit hole and I started to find out that I was able to do so many different things. Um, I'm looking at something that I'll, I'll show you guys later. Now, I have an incredible talent. I'm not trying to brag. As I said, I was born with this. I didn't ask for it. I was born with this. But since I had it, I had to find out how deep my rabbit hole went. Now, I love comics, but with the talent I have, and you probably have that same talent. If you're an artist, you probably have the same talent as I have, probably even better. Now, a lot of people send me, and I'm asking, I'm saying online, you know, if you need some help, you some some um, uh, pointers, you know, send me your work, and I can, you know, help you move in the right direction, help you take some steps up. Now, it sounds bad when I say it, but you'll understand what I'm saying. Now, the people that send me their stuff or show me their stuff, they are not as good as me. And the only reason they are not is because they haven't put 20, 35, 40 years into drawing. Give them that time, they'll probably blow me out of the water. At the age that they are now, these guys are pretty good, but when time comes, they'll get better. But my thing is, as I said, I never wanted to stay with one thing because I wanted to see what I can do. And that is my goal. My personal goal in life is to see exactly what can I do with my talent. I'm still going down that rabbit hole and I'm still pulling stuff out. Now, I'm going to show you some more pictures. As I say, it's, this is not a, a bragging, showing your picture show. I want to show you what I found as I went down that rabbit hole and I found out what I can do with my talent. And hopefully when you see this, you'll say, you know what, I'm going to go down my rabbit hole and see what I can do. Now, as I said before, I used to hate doing watercolors, but it's just something that I had the ability to do. I didn't know it until I started doing it. And these are just some quick pictures. As I say, you can go back and relook at it. And through comics, because I did comics, you know, I was able to do these things. And this is, I think this is color pencil and watercolor, but you know, I kept going down that rabbit hole and started to do, you know, these drawings. And there are so much more that I have, you know, in my room that's just, 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 they're just all over the place. This one, you might have seen this on some of my web pages, but this is another. Um, let me stand up. This is watercolor and um, color pencil and marker. This, person doing perspective, this is pen and ink. You know, I, like as I say, I, I will always love doing comics because it got me to that point. This is another watercolor that I didn't think that I could do with watercolor. But if you draw, if you're sitting around and you're just doodling at the dinner table, doodling at work or school, then there's something inside you that wants to come out. And that's that artist in you. Go ahead, start drawing more. I don't like to say don't stop doodling. Just draw more. Just keep drawing. Keep drawing. Go in that rabbit hole. Get you some paints. Get you some cheap paints and some papers. Start painting some of your doodles. Get you some colored ink, colored uh, pencils, whatever. Uh, color into your doodles to see how far that rabbit hole of yours can go. You would be surprised. All the things I was, as I said, I didn't know I could do watercolor. Also, at one point in my life, I started sculpting. I didn't know that I had that. But as I said, my goal for me, when I die, I want to be able to go as far as I can go with my talent and say, 
as far as I can go. And then it's over for me. But as long as there's something else out there that I can do, I'll do it. And I will teach you guys whatever I know to help you along the road. Okay, so I don't want this video to go too far, so we'll go to the next one. The next one is comic strips. Now, if you're not detailed enough to do a comic book, do a comic strip. Now, a comic strip is almost the same as a comic book, but it's, it's shorter than that, maybe like five or six panels. And uh, you don't have to do a lot of background. You don't have to worry about perspective and so forth. Now, as a, if you were like doodling at work or something like that, start doing little comic strips. Post them at work uh, on your file cabinet or something or in the bathroom, at the bathroom door. Um, if you're at school, start doing some comic strips. Just, you know, small little things. And um, I want to give you an example of some things because some people will say, you know, well, I'm, I'm really not that good yet. I hope to be one day, but I really don't know how to draw. I want to give you some examples just of what to do. And these are all things that you can do because I'm talking to those that are, to, I'm pointing to those that are, are still young and have their whole life ahead of them. I wish I had somebody to point me in the direction that I'm trying to point you when I was young. I would be a multimillionaire right now, no doubt about it. But I want to show you a couple things you can do, especially where I'm uh comic strip wise okay for those of you that say you cannot draw um can you draw a circle can you draw two dots can you make two dots can you draw a c the letter c upside down like a smiling face all right check this out this could be a comic strip you know they got the two guys with the, yeah, two faces talking it's like hi hi what's the other one is um why are you so sad? I lost my job. And I, what is the other one? My job is hiring. Is it really? And it's like, can you start tomorrow? And it's like, yes. So you see two smiley faces. This is a frowny face. This line is straight across and then he's happy again. Now you do that, add some color to it. And that can be a comic strip. You can put that on your, and it doesn't have to be this. But as I say, you can go to work, put it on your, your, your hanging over your desk, put it on the bathroom or in the, in the break room. And you do something like this every day, put this on the line, on the line, and then people will start to see it, recognize it, becomes a comic strip. And later on, you can add bodies to them, little stick figures or whatever. But comic strips, that's a good way to start to get your name, some work out there and a possible way to make you some money. Another one, greeting cards. Now there's always an occasion. Every day there's some kind of either occasion or occasion for an occasion. It could be a birthday, anniversary, oh, you're sick, uh, get well, you're moving, welcome to the next, something. Greeting cards are always in fashion and it's more simpler than um, comic strips. Greeting cards. Now this is something I played with a long time ago, some type of wolf. I don't know, I think my mother gave me this idea. So I started playing around with this wolf for, um, to do greeting cards myself. Never finished them, never finished them though. No. Because as I say, my mind, I have so much ability, not bragging again, that I continue to go left, right, up and down. So greeting cards, another one. And as I said, you can go out and buy, um, uh, uh, I can't think of what, the paper, Bristol board paper, fold it or cut it, put it together somehow. Greeting cards, simple. You just have to think of little witty sayings and you can hand that out at work. Another way that you can do it, put it online. Uh, Brian's greeting cards, a greeting for every occasion. Simple, easy to do. Another way to make money using your artistic ability. The next one, freelance artists. Now, when you become a little more better, when you go further down that rabbit hole and develop your skills and find out exactly what you can do, freelance artists, because there are so many people that can't draw. I don't want to say that, you know, they can or they can't, but there's so many people that either they say they can't, so they, they stifle themselves and not try, or it's kind of too late for them to start. So they need an artist, whether to do character designs for their comic book, which I used to do a ton of those. Uh, a, a couple people asked me to do character designs for gaming. Um, 
uh, logos. Well, that's more graphic design, but that's another one. But um, as a free, well, freelance um, artist, a freelance illustrator can do, you know, from flowers, trees, you know, uh, storefronts, whatever. But once I said, once you go down that rabbit hole and start developing your talents, freelance artists make really good money. Once you get your name out there, they make really good money. I have been called to do uh, uh, novel covers, interiors for novels. Um, I, I don't, and I have no idea how they did. The Ford plant here in, in Georgia called me because they, they, the Ford plant have people that start from school and they continue to work. So they wanted to give these guys a little more, I don't want to say education, but a little more knowledge to do things other than working on assembly lines. So somehow they contacted me to teach airbrush. So I taught airbrush for a time at the Ford plant, you know, freelance artists. All right, so this is something that I did for, it was back in the day when me and my friends uh, had our own little comic thing going. These are our characters. I don't have anybody's character to show you that I'm working on because that's not for me to show you their character because they might want to keep it secret. But if you do a character design and if that character happens to be in a game or somehow make it to publishing, that could be big money for you because they'll say, oh, Brian Proctor designed my character. Phone call. Hey, Brian, can you do our character? So that's big money drawing at home. And that's that. it should be your goal to be able to draw at home and... Um, make money that way. I worked for a Christian magazine for maybe about three months and I made $1,500 a week at home drawing in my pajamas four hours a day. Now, I was living the life, but for some reason, another company came and they bought the magazine and everybody got fired. You know, I was, I didn't even, have, I, the, the, I was in, where was I? I think I was in I think I was here in Georgia and the, the company was in Maryland. So I never saw anybody there. I just had an editor call me and uh, would tell me, oh, we were sending you the next packages for the, the pictures in the book, the illustrations in the book. So I would do it and I'd mail it out. And then a couple of days later, I'd get my check. So I think about a, about a month went by and I called my editor and I said, what, what happened? And she was like, oh, nobody told you somebody bought the company and everybody got fired. Like, wow, you know, so, but that is the goal. If you can imagine waking up whenever you want to wake up, go to your drawing table in your pajamas, draw for a couple hours, go back to bed, go out, lift weights, play ball, whatever. That should be the dream of an artist. Unless you want to go work for like um, uh, Kids Cartoon Network or something, go into office every day and, and draw, which wouldn't be bad either. But I prefer doing it at home on my drawing table. But that's another story, so character design, something else. Go down that rabbit hole, see what you can do. Find out, can you use color pencils? Can you use magic markers? Can you ink? Do this stuff. And a good way to do this is to get a sketchbook, get a cheap sketchbook, and then just draw. Don't try to draw something that you're gonna keep. Draw it, just real quick drawing. You can use a picture, draw whatever you wanna draw, and then try to ink it then color it, draw some background, some trees or something in the back. And if it messes up, so what? You weren't gonna keep it anyway. But that's another way to start developing your talent because it might come out beautiful and you're like, wow, shock me. Go down that rabbit hole. All right, next one is write and illustrate children's books. Something I said to somebody, there will always be children. There will always be taxes, death, and children. So children have to read something. Children have to start out. They don't start out with comic books, but they do start out with children's books. And these are a couple of the children's books that I wrote and uh, illustrated. And uh, they are available on Amazon. Shameless plug. But even with the children's books, somewhat like um, the comic strips, you don't have to be perfect in that. As long as it's colorful, you know, it's a good story and uh, children enjoy it. You can do children's books. You can do it at home. I, uh, I published my first children's books. It's with, it was with a publishing company, but that thing was like $1,200 to, 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 to go out and publish that. So this is CreateSpace. CreateSpace basically is free. 
Um, I think the only thing you pay for is now is a proof proof copy, and I think this is the proof copy, so that you can that you can um, check it out and see any mistakes, and then tell them okay, it's fine, or you know make corrections and send it. So CreateSpace.com, they check that out. CreateSpace, you owe me some money for giving you a plug. But another thing, get up, work on your book, sell your books, and make money from that way. From that, you don't have to punch no clocks, hear no bosses hollering and screaming. You got to stay late because you have to get that done. Children's books. And then I taught a class on how to do children's books too. And there was, it, it, and not bragging, but that was the only class because I work at my local college. And uh, it was a summer class that I taught. And that, that they said that that had standing room only. They had to turn people away because so many people wanted to do learn how to do children's books. So that is a great thing to do to make money as well. So, okay, next one. Clothes designers. Now, I'm not going to say make up. Uh, new type of clothes and sew them together, but you can design clothes and nowadays it's um, a lot of it is the T-shirts you can do your pictures and your sayings on t-shirts That is another great way to make money when I was young. I don't know how how young I was I started just sketching out some different designs for t-shirts for shirts And I think I was I think I was in my early early um teens when I started doing this, this stuff, but I never had anybody to help me make clothes. So it was not, it just didn't come to fruition. So, but one day, one day I'm going to have all of this stuff done. I plan on having my own art studio. That is my dream. So I can hire uh, artists so that to help them have their dream come true as well. And I put this on Kickstarter a long time ago, but never made any money. So I guess it wasn't my time yet, but I want to start a uh, studio art studio bring in artists to help me get some of my stories out once my stories start rolling we'll turn around and help him or her get their stories out hire some other people to help as well and then once she or he gets their things out we turn around and help that other third person get their stories out whether it's um, um, comic books novels whatever is artists helping artists in one big group and that's the goal for me so yeah if you're out there and you're a millionaire and you want to give me a million dollars to help me get this company started you get everything for free every book every t-shirt every whatever every game you get that for free so that's just yeah think about that all right next one and this is getting kind of worldly but it is for artists tattoo artists now a lot of People say, oh, yeah, yeah, that would be good. That would be good. Now, tattoo artists make good money, good money. I went to two places to get a job because, hey, I can draw. I've done comics. I took my portfolio to show them. And one, one set of people were blown away. The other place I went to, they were kind of stuck up. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's okay. It's okay. You know, like that. And it's just, you're full of yourself. So the bad thing about tattoo doing tattoos now when you think about being a tattoo artist you think about the fine good looking girl that comes in there you want the, the nice tattoo but in reality it's not like that they told me it's not like that you have some of the biggest sloppiest nastiest sweatiest smelliest people coming in there to get tattoos and I remember one guy was saying that he had to tell one of them look you got to go home and take a shower and then come back because he was just nasty just funky so another thing which turned me away from doing tattoos is well, a couple things is that you have to work for free for two years they told me it was two years you work for free for two years and what you are is the gopher you go to mcdonald's and get them lunch you put gas in their car you wash their car you clean up the shop before you can even touch any of the tools so i'm like you know what two years i think not and also you have to have a tattoo that i understand i don't have any tattoos but how can you sell cigarettes if you don't smoke you want to be and these are the greatest cigarettes uh, you know but I'm going to sell you something that I don't use. How can I sell you a tattoo or do a tattoo for you if I don't have them? And I really don't plan on getting a tattoo until they can come up with a silver color paint. Because I always wanted to do like a half robot arm. And I'm looking for the picture. So bear with me for two seconds. This. 
if they can come up with a paint or color that reflects light like that, then I would get a tattoo because something I thought of is like a half metallic, you know, robot arm piece that just goes all the way around and you have like wires coming in or going out into that metal, but it has to shine every time I move. So maybe if they ever come out with a metallic paint like that, then I'll get it. But until then, no, 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 no tattoo for me. And you're also dealing with blood. You know, there's a lot of blood, so you have to be clean. And if you're squeamish about that, and um, you cannot mess up on a tattoo. That's that's something that I, that you cannot do because you mess up on somebody's arm or misspell a word or something like that. Yeah, you 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 through. But these guys say they make a lot of money. They work all summer and they take all winter off because they make just that much money. So I mean, if that's something. You want to think about take your portfolio to a tattoo shop and ask them say hey take a look at this this is something i really wanted to do good money but yeah two years of free work being a gopher but it's something to try so next up is graphic designer now that's another one worldly so to do graphics you either have to have the pro or you have to have programs either you go to school or you learn it for yourself but there are always people that want things like logos, um, flyers, uh, anything that's done through a computer. I'd rather do hands-on, but graphic designers do make good money and you work from home. But the problem is you are fighting other graphic designers. Because if I had 10 years of design work and you're just starting out, uh, I'll probably beat you out unless your price is crazy cheap. And your work is just as good as mine but a graphic designer is another thing because my friend who started a comic book company with me he was one of my first students and i said this in my last video when i was teaching comics how to draw comics years ago he's one of my first students and he's probably one of the few that actually stayed with it he's the one he's got uh three book three book titles out by himself the only thing we had is a letterer. We have a guy who's a friend who does all lettering for us, but this guy does all the inking, all the drawing, all the writing, all the coloring by himself. And I think it's the, the first book he had, I think he had, said he had like 40 some issues out by himself. And it is not easy to do that. And he went to school full time for graphic design and he works uh, a job full time. And then he still has to do his life thing, cook and clean and so forth and go out. But yeah, graphic designer makes a lot of money, but there's a lot of stress because there are, when he started telling me about looking at the signs and the colors they use for signs and the shapes and so forth and so on. And once I started looking at it, I was like, wow, I never knew. So yeah, that's stuff that you can learn in school. But um, uh, what is next on my list? Hold on one second. Interior design. Interior design, to do that, you would need a lot of perspective, a lot of perspective. But if you're somebody can walk in a room and look around and say, man, it would be good if you had these kind of curtains up, or if you move this table over here, or if you do that, and you can start drawing that stuff out. Interior design is good for you because not only one, you can, you can make a lot of money designing somebody's house. You can redo your house take pictures. I had a friend who was painting and kind of, she just liked doing it. She wasn't an interior designer, but she liked moving. And I said, take pictures of every time you do that to show people that you can do that to their place. So interior design is another good one, but you have to have that interior design mindset. Um, this is kind of far out there, but um, car design, car design. And um, this is slim, you know, I would actually scratch this one off. But since I got started, I would tell you a story. Uh, about when I was in high school, I was doing so much art. And the funny part is I hated math. I couldn't see numbers in my head. Somebody like, if you say 24 plus 18, I'm lost. My brain cannot retain it. If I write it down, yeah, but in my head, I couldn't see it and I hated math. But I could see somebody do with a twist or turn and I can draw that out of my head. But math, I hated that. So when I had um, enough credits to graduate high school, uh, math credits, I dropped math and I got another art class. So I had two art classes. So science, something I knew I wasn't gonna be a scientist. I was an artist, baby. I wanted to do art. I dropped that, I had enough credits, got another art class. So I had like four art classes out of the seven classes that I had in high school. And uh, don't go telling your mom you want to drop that stuff. When you get old enough, you can think about it. But, you know, the three 
that I couldn't drop. I don't know what that was, but literature or something. You, some of them you just can't drop. So I had like four art classes in high school. And my teacher knew that I was a good artist. And uh, he would start bringing stuff in for me to do and then stealing. He stole one of my stories one day because um, it was about a group of people fighting for something to survive and for food. And then after I told him the story, two days later, he came into the story. It's the same thing, except they were fighting for water. I didn't want to say nothing because he was older and, you know, he was helping me out. He was like giving me paper to draw on and stuff like that. So I, I didn't want to say anything. But one day he came in with uh, basically the, the schematics for a car that showed you how high a car had to be off ground, how the bumper should be and so forth and so on. And then you were supposed to draw the chassis over the car. And um, I had did that, but later on I came up with a story about an intergalactic car race and I designed this one car. And as I said, we can actually cross that off the list because to be a car designer, you have to know somebody and be out there. But let me show you the car that I did design. And this was years ago. And why am I reaching? Like I'm going to pause the video and I can just cut it and you'll never see any of this. Okay, so this was a car I designed so many years ago. And where's the other part to it? Side view, top view, front view. And I don't think I, I didn't have a back view. But as I said, this was a car for a story that I um, wrote and I designed all the vehicles. It was an intergalactic uh, race and there was all kind of different vehicles one was just a big sphere one looked like a big rolling pin with spikes on it and it would just roll over other cars so that was one of the cars I designed and um, years ago years ago when I was still hunting for a job I was fresh out of high school story true story um, when you had to look in newspapers to find jobs and call people to, to get interviews I called this guy they were looking for a car painter and I, if I could go back in time and do it again I would be a car painter and a mechanic. That's what I would be in life, plus an artist, because I paint some nice stuff on cars. But um, I called this guy to get a job. He's advertising for a car painter. The only job I ever, ever lied on. And he asked me, have you ever used the airbrush before? You know, the car, the big car spray ones. I've used the small airbrushes before, over and over. But I told him, yes, I, yeah, I know how to do it because my hand was smooth. I, could, I knew I could paint a car. You didn't have to train me. I'm good. And he said, oh, I'm sorry. Well, I'm looking for somebody who hasn't had that kind of experience so I can train them how to do it my way. And at that point, I was like, I was going to say, oh, you mean the big ones, the big ones. Oh, no, I thought you were talking about the little ones, but I couldn't. I was, I was stuck in that lie. I was stuck in that lie, and I didn't get that job. Had I got that job as a teenager, I would be the next Chip Foose. Who is Chip Foos? Look it up. Look it up. He's a car painter, designer, big, big money. So yeah, the moral of that story is don't lie, children. Don't ever lie. You get caught in it. You, yeah, don't lie. So next up is the end. I guess that's about it for now. And I was trying to get to, to tell you about ways that being young, you can work up to to do it just by developing your skills. The rest would be just design. A lot of it's just design work. You know, people want stuff that they can see in their head, but they can't put it down on paper. As I say, characters, uh, t-shirts, uh, vehicles. I have design. I designed a, what was that thing? It was an exercise bike for kids, but a lot, I stopped doing design work for people because everything that I did for them, character designs, I helped people with their comic books. I never saw it come to light. No, nope, I take that back. When I did novels, that came to light, but any other th all the other stuff never came to light. So I said, you know what? I'm wasting my time and talent helping people. I will help myself. So that's why I have so much stuff. And I've become a teacher from doing this and doing that and doing this and doing that. So I'm helping you guys the best I can to show you how to do stuff. So yeah, go down your rabbit hole. Stop drawing um, the Batman and the Spider-Man. Stuff that you see every day. Here, Johnny Jones draws uh, Spider-Man. Oh, Frank Smith draws Spider-Man. Tony Danza draws Spider-Man. You know, you got so many people online that's drawing the same picture. Unless you have a big name like Stan Lee or Jim Lee or Mark Silvestri or one of those big fat cats, you're not going to get too many people looking at you draw your Spider-Man. But if you have a character of your own and it's getting out there, a unique character, then people will be more apt to look at it. You say, I cannot design, or I don't know how to design or draw. Use 
a friend, use a teacher, use yourself. If you had powers, what kind of powers would you have? Think about that. I like to fly. I like to be strong. I like to, okay, what kind of costume would you wear? Would you wear have a cape? Would you wear something tight? Would you have belts and straps across that? Start thinking about that and then go from there. Design that for yourself. Then put yourself in some of those same positions, Batman and Superman. Make the t-shirts. Like I said in my other video, your, your characters on t-shirts. I'll leave a link for that. Start advertising. I'll do a video on how to advertise yourself and your skills later because once you get this stuff out, you have to advertise and show people. So I'll give you some good tips on that too. So other than that, as I say, if you have the ability to draw, if you have the ability to write, keep going. Find out what else can you do. Can you sculpt? Later on, buy some clay. Try to sculpt something small. Don't go for Batman swinging down off the tree or something like that. Can you do watercolor? Can you do um, oil pastels? Which I hated, but I did an oil pastel. The still is really, really, really messy. And because you guys are still here, I will show you this one last piece that was done in oil pastel. And this was a practice piece because I've never really used it. And when I say really, I tried to, and it just didn't work out. And years, years, years went by and I still had it. All pastels don't, you know, sprinkle, crack or anything. So I did this. So was, this was the first piece I did in years. I'm talking like 12, 15, 20 years. But going down that rabbit hole, I have the ability to do that. So let me show you that. And then we'll just end this thing right here on a good note. <laughs> Okay, so this is oil pastel. What is oil pastel? Oil pastel is like, not so much a chalk. I can't explain it right now, but this was an oil pastel piece and I did the eyes. It was just like I said, it was just practice and I was gonna do the whole thing, but I, it would've took me too long to try to get this, to get this eye the same color as that because I used different colors and different blendings and so forth. But yeah, as I say, we'll end this here and find out what you can do. But you don't know what you can do until you try. And I'm sure the stuff that I have that you might have been excited about, I'm sure you have the ability to do it. Don't ever say, I can't. Don't ever let somebody say, you can't. Don't let somebody say, oh, artists don't make money because artists are everywhere. Artists design these toys back here. Uh, artists wrote, did the pictures in these books. They designed the bookshelf to be made. Art is everywhere. Go down that rabbit hole. Find out what you can do. Don't come out. Get a flashlight if you have to. Keep going deep. Do as much as you can. A little of this, a little of that, a little of that. Find out which one you enjoy the most. Because once you bring all those talents together, there is nothing that you can go out in the world and cannot do. You get a job. Can you do this? Yes, I can. I can do that. I can do that. Let me show you this portfolio of mine. Go out there. Be the best artist you can. Don't let anybody tell you you can't be. All right. So... I want to thank one of my subscribers. She wrote me a letter today and said that it was probably the best letter that I, I had. I have a lot of people writing me and saying, thank you for the thank you for that. But it was one line in there said, if I ever publish a comic, which I really want to do, then it's because of you. And that one touched me so much that I gave her one of my free books. I gave her a free book. So yeah, because she wanted that book. So anyway, yeah. Be good. Peace. Keep drawing. I'll see you in the next video. I'm out.